Have you ever felt stuck in place? Like no matter what you did, nothing ever made any difference? Maybe like your place in life has already been chosen for you and there's simply no way out. This is the static hierarchy that we find in the anime adaptation of the cult classic webtoon hit, Solo Leveling. This has been a series that has been long anticipated in the anime community, and for the most part, I think it paid off. The structure of the webcomic has been kind of like a hit and miss situation for many others, with many of the adaptations excelling and others not quite reaching expectations or the hype of the original source material. But what I think draws readers and now viewers to this series in particular is the twist that it presents on a somewhat tired isekai trope. It's a subversion of the power fantasy that is the OP main character, but one that still allows for some pretty epic fight scenes ahead. For this nerdy sermon, we're gonna take a look at how the story of stasis to change is an exciting parallel to one of the core tenets of the Christian faith and how it actually deconstructs the once saved, always saved mentality that can lead to Christian cruelty. What could this power scaling anime possibly have to do with our own salvation? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith games. And yeah, I totally talk to the system as well. Alexa, give me the stealth ability. Sorry, Nate. I'm afraid I can't do that. Okay, never mind. I'm your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly deep dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. Folks, as always, we'll be reading from our scripture first. We're going to start with the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 4 through 12. We're reading from the NRSV UE. That's our preferred translation. It's what's going to be up on the screen. If you have one that you prefer to use, feel free to use that one as well. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are then gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So what exactly is solo leveling? Well, before the series actually begins for us, the world has been irrevocably changed by the invasion of some interdimensional beings that come to Earth. With their appearance, suddenly humans begin to exhibit some supernatural strength and magical powers. Some are healers, some are swordsmen, some are assassins, etc., etc. But all of them get lumped into this new structure of humans known as Hunters. Now, hunters are human beings that have been directly impacted by the introduction of mana into the Earth ecosystem. Some humans are not capable of handling the mana at all and enter into this coma-like state called eternal slumber. But the rest of humanity has varying degrees of acceptance of the mana, with most people just kind of living normal lives. Then you have this minuscule portion of the population that can not only handle the existence of mana, but can also use the mana as hunters. According to the wiki, it's estimated that 0.001% of the global population were lucky enough to awaken as hunters, and 0.0002% have ranks of C or higher. So there's this power scale that ends up placing all of the hunters anywhere from E rank to S rank. And this process of becoming a hunter is known as an awakening. Now, it doesn't take long for the political machinations to begin happening, and the hunters become a sort of commodity for accruing wealth as well as protecting the planet from these beasts. Some of these hunters are government agents, some are gilded with gangs, or some are gilded with a more corpo experience. It really runs the gamut of occupation. And by the time that our story starts, the corruption has already run pretty deep. The hunters are fairly normative in society, uh, and some people are using them to make money, some of them are power hungry. It's a good story there. Enter our MC. Sung Jim Woo. As I mentioned before, this is a sort of reverse isekai with an OP protagonist. So you likely think he's going to be this epic MC, but no. I've always been the weakest, and I've been mocked for it at every turn, but I still try as hard as I can. Jin Woo is a rank E. He's literally the weakest rank E in South Korea, dramatically the worst of the worst. He's sort of on his last rope at the point that we find him. He goes on this fairly straightforward dungeon crawl to just try and find one mana crystal that he can hopefully sell to make some money to afford some better gear or at least put towards some basic survival as a, a person trying to live, which, you know, mood. However, on this double dungeon crawl, things go wrong. Like, really, really wrong. This dungeon is misleading, and despite appearing low ranking, 
It's actually way above the pay grade of the party there. As Jin Wu's party bites off more than they can chew and investigates a hidden section of the dungeon, the party find themselves trapped in a bizarre torture puzzle where many of them meet a very quick and brutal end. By the end of the puzzle, Jin Wu uses his desperate wits to solve the puzzle and sacrifices himself to allow the few remaining members of his party to escape back to the dungeon and then back to the surface. Yeah, no, you heard you heard that correctly. I said what I said. Jin Wu, our LP protagonist, straight up dies in the cold open to the series. Like just dies, dies, dead, gone, completely over, kaput, game over, man, game over. But then something strange happens. Jin Wu wakes up in a hospital bed. And like Kirito from Sword Art Online, he can now see these menus in front of his person that no one else can see. He discovers that he's been chosen by something known as the system. He is now the sole player for this computer-like experience around him. He has this ability to level up. See, in this world of hunters, you're given what you got. If you're an E-rank hunter, you're an E-rank hunter. It's not some video game where you just level up until it becomes exactly that, but only for our protagonist. Jin Wu has experienced something that is unheard of, a re awakening. He's been brought back from the dead into something new and capable of something that no one else in this world is change. With that, let's take a look at our scripture for this one. Today's passage comes from the Gospel of John and immediately follows one of the more famous of John's allegories, Jesus as the vine and apostles as the branches, going a little bit deeper into that. Jesus has just finished explaining the premise and then explains how vital this concept is to the future of the church. Abide in me, then, disciples. Just as the branch cannot produce fruit without abiding on the vines, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the the branches. Jesus says it again from a slight shift in perspective. Abide in me and I in you because otherwise you can do nothing. You're pointless. Straightforward so far. Jesus is the vine. Got to stick with Jesus. Nothing we can do otherwise. Next, we get a bit more intense. Whoever does not abide in Jesus is thrown away like a branch and withers until being gathered and then used for kindling. Dang, Jesus. Okay, we hear you. Then we get yet another recap. Abide in me, my words in you, and whatever you ask will be done for you. Why? because my Father is glorified by you bearing fruit and becoming my disciples. As the Father loved me, I've loved you, now abide in that love. We've now brought in another member of the Godhead of God the Father, who is the purveyor of this love that is now being passed down through the education of Jesus' ministry and is now being pressed upon the disciples. The fruit the disciples are to produce is to echo the love of the Father taught via the love of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus continues, if you keep my commandment, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I've loved you. Okay, we really went off the deep end there at the end for some reason. Jesus is essentially unveiling a deeper message behind the commandment to love our neighbor. Jesus calls the disciples to abide in him, and abiding in him means loving as God the Father loved and Jesus taught us to love. The way that we abide in Jesus is to keep the commandment. What is the commandment? To love one another as Jesus loved the disciples. Long story short, the two greatest commandments, love God, love others. But that in and of itself is not what I want to really focus on in this one. Instead, I want to highlight that Jesus insists on the disciples abiding, not unlike the dude, right? The dude abides. It's an active kind of faith. Being a disciple is an active life of following Jesus' example and abiding in his love. See, there's this misconception that happens somewhere on what it means to become a Christian. It's intercepted into the actual teaching of Jesus. We don't believe that our faith is this one and done kind of thing, but we also don't believe that it's a works-based kind of thing either. Thankfully, in the United Methodist Church, we have a framework that was developed from John Wesley, the father of Methodism, called the Way of Salvation. Salvation is a journey in and of itself, not a a destination. We start with everything that happens before we accept Jesus as our Savior in our baptism. All of this is called prevenient grace. God knows us and is pursuing us in these moments. We're being covered and pursued by a grace that has already been paid. Then when we're ready to accept Jesus, we do this thing called justification, where things are made right, where we accept that Jesus really did die and raised to life again for my sake. And many of us stop there for some reason. We think that's that. We're good to go from this point, scot-free. But that wasn't how Wesley understood it, and also it wasn't how Jesus taught it or the early church practiced it. See, Faith is active and involves abiding in Jesus. Producing good fruit is evidenced by the way that we love God and love others. Wesley understood these as acts and evidence of piety and holy living. And we call this sanctifying grace, the place where we are reaching sanctification. But we aren't yet perfect or done with the journey. Instead, we're striving for 
this thing called perfection. Is that possible before heaven? Who knows? Regardless, just as the kingdom of heaven is being formed on earth, so too are we being formed into our perfected, holy, set-apart self as a part of the body of Christ. Now, the trouble that I have with the current conundrum of Christianity is that we've become so obsessed with the miasma at the beginning. Provenient grace is great. Justifying grace is beautiful. But the true majesty of God's grace in our lives is the rest of it, the process of sanctification, God making us perfect as Christ. Christ prayed for us to be perfect. That is the spice of the Christian walk. I think there are some interesting parallels here with solo leveling. See, the world has been given these static hunters who similarly think that the end of the line happens at this awakening or justification. When you get your powers, that's it. There's no growth. Some are simply better than others. Have you ever heard a Christian who might think that they are just simply better than others. This leads to Christian toxicity and elitism. We start to think our own mess don't stink and there isn't anyone as good or as great or as loved by God as we are. But see, the truth of the matter is, this is unbearably unloving. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. The price was paid for all. The people who act this way have completely forgotten the love of Jesus. They've stopped abiding in Jesus's love and look, we're told what happens to those branches, right? Trimmed and set out for kindling. Were they ever saved? An argument can be made they never knew Jesus in the first place. Our holiness should be a natural product of our pursuit of trying to be more Christ-like. And Jesus tells us what that means. Love one another. Fun fact, do you know what passage immediately follows this one? The world will hate you as they hated me. Now, I know a lot of victim complex Christians who cherry pick this scripture when they tell people the truth about hell. But Jesus had just finished telling the disciples just how deeply to love others and then said, this radical love that they're going to offer is going to be what leads to the hatred from the world. Jesus was crucified because he loved too well and he loved the wrong people. If we wanna abide in Christ, we better get busy loving or fall off the vine trying. Now with all this in mind, what does it actually mean for us today? Now the truth of both solo leveling and this passage is that the truly interesting life is one that is evolutionary and growing. A static faith is boring and toxic. A static power level is boring and toxic. But the magic of our awakening in Christ isn't that it happened, but the future that is ahead. A future of more powerful love, more powerful faith, more powerful hope offered out into the world. This is a part of the reason behind our three rules and the third one being to strive to grow. Originally, John Wesley used the phrase to attend upon the ordinances of God, which is a fancy way of saying, do things that draw you closer to God or sanctifying grace. So we try in our community to keep it in our minds 24 seven. Am I doing good? Am I doing no harm? Am I striving to grow in the grace that Christ has set before me? Consider asking yourself that question. When was the last time you allowed yourself to grow deeper in love with God? When was the last time your faith grew? Now, I'm not trying to flex or pull a pastor card here, but I do this every single day. Whether I'm 10% better, 1% better, half a percent better, whatever, I wanna be closer to God tomorrow than I am today. And I live every single day that way. Even when it's really challenging and tough, I hope that I'm trying to take a tiny step towards loving God better and loving my neighbor better every single day because that is the direct commandment placed upon me as one trying to be Christ-like. And I would encourage you to do the same thing here in community with us at Checkpoint Church. We have these rules for a reason. We want to practice holy living in community with one another in our Discord server and beyond. So with all this in mind, whether you're a rank E hunter, rank S hunter, or would rather just chill at home away from the interdimensional beasts, know you're always welcome here at Checkpoint Church. Folks, thank you so much for watching this one. I so appreciate taking time out of your busy days to join us on these nerdy deep dives. If you want more of what Checkpoint Church has to offer, we are streaming every other Sunday, every Tuesday, every Friday over on twitch.tv slash Checkpoint Church. We are also active 24 seven all day long, every day over on our Discord server. We would love to get to know you in either of those spaces. I'll link both of them down below. Hey, listen, if you believe in our mission to serve nerds, geeks, and gamers, then I wanna encourage you to use that Give to Checkpoint Church link in the description. Or even better, if you consider Checkpoint Church to be your church, consider setting up a tithe there too. We need your support to keep this ministry going and to keep on loving more nerds, geeks, and gamers. Maybe you don't consider Checkpoint to be your church and you want to take some of these back to your own community or small group or whatever it may be. Consider checking out JesusLovesNerds.com where we're putting out a weekly curriculum based off of our nerdy sermons. I'd love for you to let me know what you think of that. Hey, if you watched this far, odds are you liked this one. Be sure to click that thumbs up. Let me know that this is one that you enjoyed. If you're looking for more videos to watch a lot like this one, you can go check out The Executioner and Her Way of Life 
for another interesting subversion on the isekai genre, one of my favorites. Or if you just want another kind of deconstruction, go check out Madoka Magica, always a good time. And I just super enjoy that show and cannot recommend it highly enough. Or you can go watch our classic on Mushika and Tensei for what many consider to be the real gem of the isekai genre, even though I still don't get it. Hey, quick question for you. You get to reach the maximum level in one skill right now. What are you maxing out? Let me know in the comments down below and look down there for Nerd Pastor Nate to find out my answer. With that, we're gonna end this one as we always do with our three things that we believe to be true about every single one of you out there. Whether you believe in God, don't believe in God, go to church, don't go to church, hate God or hate church, we still believe these three things to be true about every single one of you. Number one, that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you, we want community with you. And number three, really that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place, why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, until the next time that I see you, whether that be on Twitch, whether that be on Discord, or it'll be same time, same place for another of these nerdy sermons next week. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye! Ah, okay. Hot dog. Man, feels good. Although I'm not entirely sure that's how you spell pixie. I always spelled it I-E. Why are they shooting so hard? Stop shooting so hard. Stop it. Why are they doing that? Did I break the game? Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. I mean, you don't need to you don't need to fire out the laser so hard there, my friend. Why are you doing that? Stop what you're doing. Don't. Don't. Stop. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Why is it shooting him so hard? Calm down, friend. Like chill out, man.